Chapter 13. I Overlooked an Orchid Back in the 1960s, I prayed under the same tree for three or four years while living in the state of Georgia. I was praying in a field under a big pine tree when I had only been in the gospel for about a year, and I did not understand a lot about religion. In fact, when I had gone into the army at the age of 17, I didn't know what a Protestant was. I thought a Jew was someone that would try to bargain you down to the lowest price possible. I had no idea that there were different denominations in religion. I had been raised in the mountains away from religion, in a family that was not religious. I had never read the Bible or attended church until I was 26 years old, after the Lord filled me with the Holy Spirit one night. And I did not even know what was happening to me. All I knew was that a wave of love poured over me, and it changed me. I no longer was the same person I had been the day before. So forward to my prayer tree in Georgia. One night while I was praying, the Holy Spirit started making intercessions for me in my soul, speaking in me, Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, over and over. You should understand that a mountain man from the land of the Hatfields and McCoys thought that mercy was weakness. At that time, I wanted to be a tent preacher, casting out devils, healing the sick, baptizing people in water and in the Holy Ghost. So at that moment in time, I overlooked an orchid. The Holy Spirit inside of me was all I ever needed or would ever need. In the 60s, there were tent meetings at, with as many as 10,000 people attending. Just think, 55 years later, you can hardly find a tent meeting. So what the Holy Spirit was saying in me was beyond my understanding. I didn't know that the people were Bible worshipers and not real Christians. They were worshiping a golden calf, an image of God's word made to speak, the Bible says, the mark of the beast. I was trying to save people that were of the devil living after the flesh, with a form of godliness denying and resisting the Holy Spirit. Then a few years later, Jesus spoke to me, the Bible is an idol. And the same people that I had been fellowshipping ran me out of their churches and hated me. I had been worshiping with the devil's children. So that is why the Holy Spirit was praying in me to Jesus and making intercessions for me with groanings that cannot be uttered. I learned a lesson that will stay with me forever. The Holy Spirit in you is all we will ever need. He teaches us comforts us, and makes intercessions for us. He writes his laws in our hearts. He is all we need. I had been going to voodoo meetings disguised as Holy Ghost meetings, and the Holy Spirit was speaking the truth in me to deliver me from that terrible deception. I was overlooking an orchid, looking for Jesus in all the wrong places. He is not in buildings, tent meetings, or books. The gates of hell will never prevail against the living, invisible Holy Spirit Church of God, but unfortunately, it has prevailed against the established Bible churches of today. There are no true apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers of Christ today to instruct anyone in the true gospel of Christ. There is no one filled with the Holy Spirit. They are all deceived and deceivers, full of Bible verses and false doctrine, pretending to have the Holy Spirit, but never really coming to the living God and giving up their lives after the flesh to live after the Spirit. I never learned any real truth from any person on earth today, I was only helped by Jesus through the Holy Spirit, and He has taught me many things and continues to teach me daily. Many will say this is strange, but I learned a living lesson. Pay attention. Many will say to Jesus in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out devils in your name and done many wonderful works? And then Jesus will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You see, they only knew about Jesus from the Bible and imagined they knew him from reading about him. They do not know him by the Holy Spirit. Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light and an image of Jesus Christ. The devil has won the hearts and the minds of people with deceit and offering them worldly blessings and promising them heaven when they die. But by the grace of God, this hillbilly was delivered by Jesus Christ, who taught me that it is Christ in you, not in a book. I overlooked an orchard through my ignorance. But Jesus had mercy on me because he knew that I truly wanted to do his will, and therefore he forgave me and continues to teach me, comfort me, and lead me through this maze of religious deception, and has chosen my wife and I to tell this message as witnesses of the truth, so that if anyone wants to truly have life in Christ, they have a chance to overcome the mark of the beast and come to the living God with their heart. We only have one mediator, and that is Jesus Christ, who works by the Holy Spirit, not Bibles, not Bible preachers, and not churches.